You got. To, I just now hit the record button. I forgot. We're gonna have to remind me, man. We went. We went half the class without recording. Oh, where is my okay. Mom, this is half the class we didn't record on when you guys come on. We're reading a story out of, of uh, about our language called Bear Girl. It's a Ponca story, a Ponca myth. And I know we're talking about the word Veggie, huh? We found it and how sometimes the translation ain't all, all there or sometimes we leave it out. And we're looking for a word called ma me ma me in the phone conditioner. Is it like M A and then S? M A S A or M A Z? Yeah, that's what I was looking for. M A S A N I. That's exactly what I was looking for. I was in the M A S, and then I was looking for an A, but I found Mansa, which is arrogant. I see on page I one. On, on page one sixteen, there's uh. Monsanti, Monsanti. It says other side. That's much something described as being oh, over okay. across the thing, Thank such as the lake or ocean. He went to the Monsanti of the ocean. Oh, okay, I see it. That's, on one sixteen, that's Monsanti. Mons. Yeah, I Mons see it. I'm sorry, Mons it says, uh, yeah, Monsanti. 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 And the A goes up. Okay, listen, you can Monsanti. also say, when I was young, they said Monsanti, but listen, you could also, both ways are correct. Monsanti, Monsanti, both of those are correct. But the way I learned it was the me. Thank you, Sean. Very good, Sean. Okay. Thank you. You did, because he was reading through them. You needed that. Okay, so remember that word and they get on. Because we're talking about people on this side, but you see, at least this one describes people being on the other side of a body of water. You see? Yeah. No, but yeah. They, they can, mm -hmm. But they, they can make it. Say, yeah. Down in the dictionary, there can be people on this side, people over here on our side of the water. If uh, you're cutting out, Eagle Rod, I can't hear what you're saying. Just remember, people on on the Vegan you know, means people on our side. But it's on our side of the water, of a body of water. People on this side of a water, body of water. They don't say that, but you guys need to make a notation in your dictionary on it. I did. I definitely did that. I wrote C. Degiha. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, listen, uh, and then we're going to take a break. We're going to take a 10-minute break, and then when I come back, we're going to sing some songs, and then we're going to come back to the Bear Girl. But like I said, we're not even halfway through it. Okay, sounds good. Break time. Go to your bathroom. <laughs> break time. See you in a minute.
Oh. Were Tia, hey, guess what I got? What? Yay! I found it. That book right there is a good one. That's almost one of our best. Listen, that's one of our almost best, like our best book on sentence structure. Mm -hmm. Cool. Has, but listen, that's has, awesome. Has, has, show Sean. Show, show him, sis. That's the book you need to get, Sean. All right, well, let me write that down. Hold on. I've never seen that book. I'm holding it. All right, hold on. Let me write that. Thanks, Connie. Let me write that down. That language, that oh, language no is purely Bonk and Omaha. James Owen Dorsey. And also Francis the Flesh. He was Ponca, right? Only oh, Ponca. He had, he, no, he wasn't. He didn't have a drop of Omaha blood in him. The Flesh? It, man, his dad was a his dad was a full blooded Frenchman, French tra Canadian trapper, and okay. his dad, his I mean, his mom was a full blooded Ponca. Thank you, Connie. I got it. I got the. I got it. Thank you. I'll have to see Not where a I problem, can. Honey. I'll have to see where I can find that book. I know what. What page were you on with that story? I know that wasn't one of the books that uh, that we really? had that we had purchased or whatever. So I'll have to look for it myself. Is that is that like a? That's not like a dictionary though. What's that like? Is it just like um? It, it is. It's like a dictionary. It is like a dictionary? Okay. Let me yeah. see if you can see a page. I don't know if you can see it or not. Can you see part of that page? Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. That's kind of what it All looks right. like. Okay, let me let me read it to you real quick, Sean. What page are you okay. on, Eagle? I'm on the pre-page. Oh, okay. I was talking about the, the story thing, but okay. Are you ready? Yep. 
the Vegeho language as used in the volumes refers to the speech of the Omaha and the Ponca tribes of the Siouan linguistic family of North American Indians. The author is responsible for the Degiha, first as the name of a group of Suian family, and secondly as the name of a particular language that group in that group. Degiha means belonging to the people of this land or those dwelling here. The Aboriginals or home or home people, when an Omaha was challenged in the dark, if it's in his own territory, he usually applied. I'm Degiha, and when you say that in, the, in Ponca, you say Degiha Bliho. Degiha Bliho. A woman might not never say that word. It was mainly men that used that word. And so, I'm a Degiha, so a Ponca might answer in the same circumstances. A Kansas would say, I am Yegiha, of which the Osage equivalent is, is I am Vekonha. These answer to the Oto Shiwiri and the Iowa Shekiwiri. And these are all related to us. The Degiha linguistic group may be divided as Degiha. The two tribes and the two dialects is the Ponca and the Omaha. Yegiha is Kansas or Kansas, Gonza, really. Vekaha. Is the Osage dialect, and then they couldn't even find one for the Quapaw. It says the material in this volume consists of missed stories and letters obtained from the Ponca to whom the author was missionary in 1871 and 1873, and from the Omahas with whom he resided in. Seven, and remember, James Owen Dorsey was with the Ponca people seven years before any of this, anyway. 1978 to 1980, the letters in part one are those sent to the Ponca Reservation in Indian Territory. I'm reading this for a reason, though. Hang on. Hold on. Why not even be the part I'm looking Oh, here it goes. Now, look, uh, Connie, go to page uh, uh, part one where it says the Degiha language by James Owen Dorsey, part one. The myths and stories in the letter, letters in the present volume have been obtained directly from Indians. They are dedicated or uh, uh, dictated in Degiha and written in the language by the collector. A brief account of each of the Indian authorities in these texts may not be considered out of place. Number one, Joseph of Flesh is a gentleman to whom I am indebted not only for myths in the Degiha and the Shiwiri, that's the Oto, also for a knowledge of a latter, a latter tongue, a collection of eth ethnological notes, etc. I regard him as my best authority. By birth, he is a Ponca. And I, all these guys say he's an Omaha, and that's an Omaha name. That was a Ponca name. My birth, he is a Ponca, but he has spent most of his life among the Pawnee, the Otos, and the Omaha. He has acquired a knowledge of the several Indian languages, and he also speaks French Canadian. While his while Frank, his younger brother, has remained with the Ponca, he's dead down here in our cemetery. He came when they did when they forced us down there. He stayed down there. He's he's up there on the hill. His younger brother, Frank, has remained with the Ponkas and is now reckoned as a chief in that tribe. Mr. LaFleche has been counted as an Omaha for many years. Though debarred by Indian law from membership in any clan, that did not prevent him from receiving the highest place amongst the Omaha governmental system. He has some influence among the Pawnee, and when the Yankton Dakotas wished to make peace with the former tribe, it was affected through the instrumentally uh, Mr. LaFleche. So, who was accompanied by, struck by the reed to the Pawnee village. Mr. LaFleche is the leader of the citizen among the Omaha. The name of two of his children are Suzette, Bright Eyes, and Frank Woodpecker. Now, don't get this mixed up now. 
Frank, known as Woodpecker, and they're a carpenter. Now, Woodpecker, now, he's named after Francis's little brother, Frank, that remained with the Ponca. Remember that? Right here, it says, yeah. by birth, he's a Ponca, but Frank, his younger brother, has remained with the Poncas. Now, they're talking about Frank, which is his son, named after his brother. Okay? The two children he had, Bright Eyes and Frank are familiar to all the punkers, but I just wanted to get you to understand that. And then it says, Mrs. Mary LaFleche is a white descendant on her dad's side and Oto by her mother, so Bright Eyes wasn't even an Omaha. Do you understand that? Yeah, I Bright, if Eyes, these Bright Eyes was not Omaha because everyone always speaks of her as Omaha. That's like she's yeah, not no, she isn't. She wasn't Omaha by anything. Okay, now this is the last one we get before Omaha people see this and get mad because they're going to get this recorded. <laughs> and I don't mean no disrespect Omaha people, but they were not Omaha. Francis LaFleche, his dad was French and was a white man. No matter how, he was a white man and his mother was a full-blooded punker. His wife, Mrs. Mary LaFleche, her father was a full-blooded white man, a French man. And her mother was a full-blooded Oto. Walutada. Walutada. That's how you say Oto and Ponca. Okay, so them children were, so Suzette or Blue Eyes and then Frank or Woodpecker or Carpenter, they were half white, a quarter Ponca and a quarter Oto. Hand raised. Go ahead. Um, his name is actually Woodworker, not Woodpecker. It don't matter. Either, either way, it doesn't yeah. even matter. The point, the point okay, is, is they were not, they were not Omaha. Okay, I just it wasn't relevant. Was yeah, it, it's You're not cool. relevant in this thing. Okay. Half white, quarter Ponca, quarter Oto. That's so right. Red, okay. So how come they always portrayed it? Because that's I've. I mean, she's very famous. Famous bright eyes is very famous. So just she's the only, only thing that she did famous was that she got that att the attorney that got Grandpa Standing Bear off, and then she married him. So she right. were, she married a white man. She married a white man. So she her children were three quarter white, and they were one eighth Ponca and one eighth Oto, right. not Omaha. Yeah, but I'm just saying. That, yeah, no, I never heard what you just said, Eagle Rod. I always seen her presented as Omaha. No. Not a, not a drop of Omaha blood we in there. We need a genealogy chart so we can understand this better. Maybe I can make one. That's well, I just told you guys. I just told you guys verbally what she was, and I broke it down. Right. Their I children, their children, were half white and a quarter Ponca and a quarter Oto. And then when Bright Eyes married that white guy, the doctor, I mean the lawyer. Their children were three quarter white and an eighth Ponca and an eighth Oto. Okay. So do they have living relations still down anywhere? They currently they got, kind of, they got all kind of Omaha La Flesh now, but not then. Not then. Okay. Gotcha. Frank Frank married Omaha. That's how that Omaha got that name is because of his son Frank named after his brother Frank. Gotcha. Frank is down here at the Ponca Cemetery at White Eagle on the hill, what they call Pahayaka. He's here. Zerdo de Eta, he's here. Now, Frank, his son, married all them. And don't get me wrong now, when Bright Eyes married that uh, lawyer, that uh, whatever, I forget his name, the white guy, they got Grandpa off that deal. Okay, now their children, like I said, their children were a quarter Native American and three quarters white. And their quarter consisting of an eighth punk and an eighth Oto. Now, their children, I don't know if uh, Francis's grandchildren married back into the Omaha, but I know that Frank did. Because you got a lot of the flesh, because, and then you go back into uh, Uncle Dwight, his mama, he, she, I met her a couple times when I was younger, and she is a flesh, and she speaks Omaha. Now, the, on the LaFleche side, that came from Ponca, no matter how you look at it. No matter how many people get mad, they came from Ponca. Okay. Well, got and it. Got you, it. You just read it, and, and then in Bright Eye, she didn't have a drop of Omaha blood in her. Yeah. I just, yeah. I just told you. 
He just yeah. read it. See, they did. They did. Good. Connie, go ahead and read it. This was Connie, printed. Read it by, uh, okay, this was printed really quick by the Washington Government Printing Office in 1890. And, okay. Um, where am I? Where am I starting at? Number three. Part one. I want you to reread what I said. Part one. Oh, okay. All the way to the beginning. Here we no, go. that's not all the way to the beginning. It's called part one. Part one. <laughs> Smarty pants. Joseph LaFleche is a gentleman to whom I am indebted not only for Miss and Degiha and say it again, Shiwa, Shiwari, Shiwari, but also for a knowledge of the latter tongue, a collection of ethnological notes, etc. I regard him as my best authority. By birth, he is Ponca. But he spent most of his life among the Pawnees, Otos, and Omahas. He has acquired a knowledge of several Indian languages, and he also speaks Canadian French. While Frank, his younger brother, has remained with the Poncas and is now reckoned as a chief of that tribe, Mr. LaFleche has been counted as an Omaha for many years. Though debarred by Indian law from membership in any, looks like generations, uh, or something. No, um, that what that means, Carly, that means clan. Okay, clan. I'm sorry. Okay, by any clan. Let me read that over. Though debarred by Indian law from membership in any clan, that did not prevent him receiving the highest place in the Omaha governmental system. He has some influence among the Pawnees, and when the Yankton Dakotas wished to make peace with the former tribe, it was affected through the instrumentality of Mr. LaFleche. Who accompanied? Excuse me. Who accompanied? Struck by the, struck by the reed to the Pawnee village. Mr. LaFleche is the leader of the citizens, quote unquote, party among the Omaha. The names of two of his children, Suzette Bright Eyes and Frank Woodworker or Carpenter, are familiar to all who have read of the Ponca case. Number two, Mrs. Mary LaFleche is of white descent on the father's side. She learned Oto by a residence among her mother's people. She was known in former right years. Tony. Yes. Tony. Yes. Right there, you just read right there that Mrs. You, the father Joseph LaFleche and Mary, Mrs. Mm -hmm. Mary LaFleche, and that's mm -hmm. a married name. They just told it right there, and this is a fact. This is something that's not made up. I watch, but this is the true account of mm -hmm. our people. One of the truest accounts of our people, besides walks on the ground. Tony, I'm on it. Okay, mm -hmm. so they already got it right there. They said that Joseph LaFleche was father was a French white guy. Right. The, mo the mother was a full-blooded Ponca. We know that because people told us down here. And then his wife, Mary LaFleche, her dad was also a French man. They didn't say it, just said white man. Okay, her mother was a full-blooded Oto. So how do you get that they're Omaha? Does Ponca and Oto, does Ponca and Oto equal Omaha? <laughs> no. Not to my no. knowledge. No. <laughs> no. Maybe it was that bear. Maybe that bear got involved. Well, <laughs> you see what I'm saying? But I'm going to make a point here that Bright Eyes and Woodworker did not have no Omaha blood in them, did they? Not according to this now. No. No. Okay, Sean, so how much, how much uh, white was it? How much uh, Punk and Oto were they? They were half white and half, uh, sorry, half white, quarter Ponca, quarter Oto. But no, you hit the nail on the head. Yeah. So, yeah. But they still, the, but, but the LaFleche name only lives among the Omaha. They died out down here in White Eagle. Okay. So that, that must be it because she's always associated with uh, Omaha. Whenever, no. uh, I mean, she's known for she's known for being like a doctor and all that, you know, being like the first native woman doctor and all that stuff. But she's always associated as being Omaha. So I didn't know that history. Well, you just, well, you just right, have to see two counts and, and all that. Mm -hmm. Bonka told us. It says Bonka, that they, no, she no, was adopted no. by the Omahas. Right here, it says she was adopted by the Omahas. All right, so but that she was, was. But none. The, I'm not. I'm not saying they weren't adopted by the Omaha. But what I'm saying is by. DNA, they're Ponca and Oto and no. White. Eagle, I was I was okay. making your point. I was yeah, I, was I know, making your I point. know, but, but I don't understand why they sit there and say that they called her a beautiful Omaha girl or something like that. Well, she was Oto and Ponca Sounds and like White. She, they, they adopted her as their own, and it just got passed down that way. I guess um, your guess is as good as mine.
Yeah. The thing should say is that they're, they're Ponka and Oto adopted by us Omaha. Don't just sit there and make it sound like you're trying to hype your tribe up or your people up by saying that that's who they were because they weren't. That's not the truth. But I'm not, now listen, in the Omaha relative, I'm not contesting or saying that they were not adopted by the Umaha. But what I am saying is by blood, they are Ponka and Oto and White. And that's a fact. And now, this this movie that they want to make up there, and I think it's a good thing that they want to make that movie, but why do you want to call that movie Broad Eyes and say that it's a pretty Omaha girl, and you're trying to kill the whole plot, the whole story is about what they've done to the Ponca people and about Grandpa Standing Bear trying to bring his son's bones, his remains back to the Ponca burial ground. But you want to kill our, our deal and put her in there, that don't even make no sense to me. Wow, I never heard what what movie. I never heard that. I, don't know. I <laughs> thought they already it. made that movie. They I didn't make they that movie. Made it. Sean, know. go look. Up. Sean, go. Uh, Barb, yeah. uh, I mean uh, Connie. Connie, tell uh, tell him, uh, yeah. tell him I, was, I had that deal. I had the auditions down yeah. here. I worked the auditions for our Ponca people down here. Yeah, and I never even got to go. But yeah, he was over at the Standing Bear Park, and everybody was supposed to show up and audition. And I forget who you had. You had one of the guys that was uh, affiliated with the movie come down, and uh, he was, you he know, was the director. Director. He was talking to everybody, and you know, Eagle had some pretty looking braids on. Every, everybody was looking good, and they went down there to audition. And as far as I know, I've never heard anything. But Eagle hosted the whole thing. It was really nice from what I saw. He's got it on Facebook a little bit. If you go down his no, feed, you, you can get find a chance. Have your, you said your wife's on Facebook. Have yeah, wife's on Facebook. Up. So did that was happen? it in 2020? They couldn't get enough funding. And now there's another group coming in calling it uh, the movie Chief Standing Bear. A different group. A different group. It's not yeah. like that Standing Bear book. Um, okay, Iron hang on. Man. Hang on. Hang on. Hang on real quick. Let me call the director real quick. Give me one second. <laughs> okay, good. I love it. I love it, man. Tell him I kind of look like I didn't, know they, were, I didn't know they were going to make a movie. I thought the only thing I'd ever heard of them, they, they did a play, right? That's what I had heard. They did a play. Hang on, hang on real quick. Hang on, let I me see if you answer. Him. Illustrated magazine, please leave your message after the beep. Thanks. Please record your message after the beep. When you're finished, you may hang up or press pound to review or re record your message. Jerry, how you doing, brother? It's Eagle Rod. Give me a call back at 580 All right, thank you, bro. And he even told me. Broad eyes to standing bear because I told him the story of it and I showed him the documents and I showed him in our, in our, our punk of pole rolls. There's some old rolls that have to go. Can't hear you. Baby. With his brother. Can you guys hear me? You're going really muffled. Hello? You, you went Hello? really, really muffled. Well, one of, one of the reasons I'm going really muffled is that you got your mic on. You got to mute it so you guys can hear me because when we when we're not when everybody's still not uh, muted, it's hard to hear it. Even yeah. if I do got my, I only, uh, I only turned it on to speak. It was off. Oh, I can't see. It looks like it's still on now. Okay, but listen, the, the on the deal on it with him, he, I told him the whole story and I showed him documentation, and I got some uh, in there. I got some old records of uh, when we were still up there. And some of them, even, they even call it, when, they say when we were in the Santee Reservation because they gave our land away. And they're, still, they're calling it the Santee Reservation when we were still up that way. Uh, uh, let me look at that paper so I can show them. I know. Are you finished? Yay. Okay, so anyway, that's when they gave our land away up there before we got moved, remember? All of us are still up there. That big, big paper. It's like a binder. It's real long. Do you remember that? Did you read that? I mean, they gave yeah, our land away by all of us, Ponca. Yeah, they, I'm they, about gave, that. they gave that land away. It was our land. It's and that treaty they signed and then just included everything that was Ponca. 
Fonka's everything away. that was Fonka. They gave yeah. everything away. Yeah, all of it. Yeah. You know, so I was I was just doing a little digging around, and your and it is correct in the historical page um, that they say. So what I I was just finding that um, because I just wanted to see what like general the general information that's out there to see if it was correct, and they do say um, Susan's father Joseph Flesh, who they say was also called Iron Eye, was a Ponca and. French Canadian ancestry. So they do say right here clearly that she's Ponca because her father, they say, is Ponca. This is a federal document right here. That handwriting is from people that were they're long dead over 100 years. Whoever wrote that is dead for over 100 years. Yeah. Ponca is in, uh, in the Nebraska Safety Reservation. They called up the Seneca Reservation while we were still there wow. because they signed some kind of, they did some kind of bullshit treaty and then they gave all all, all of the land not not some of it or most of it they gave all, all of the land away all of it no no yeah, yeah, that's, that's, um, that's the dirty dealing dirty dealing they did because we already had our we already had our treaty with with the government and then they went and with a new treaty with the other the northern tribes to sue and gave it all away said all that land like how can you make a mistake like that it wasn't a mistake you know what i mean um, they had the, they had a, they, it comes back to uh, it comes back to almost 10 or 11 years prior the goal was to get all native americans in one state and so we got pushed in there faster than a lot of other natives did. And maybe we should have fought, maybe we didn't, but our grandfathers, the the main chief was White Eagle and White Eagle decided not to fight them. And all the other chiefs, they could have went against White Eagle or they could have went with White Eagle. And, but in the end, they, regardless, they all went with White Eagle. They ain't one person could say that our chiefs, that we had multiple chiefs, not just my grandfather White Eagle, then you look at Whiteman's wave, his first cousin was Standing Bear. Whiteman's wave's first cousin. So that means that my grandpa, Wagasapi's sister, his full blood sister, was Standing Bear's mom. And then my grandpa, Whitey Go, from my bloodline, and then Grandpa Standing Bear from Grandpa Wagasapi's sister, I can't remember her name. So their sons are a year apart or two years apart. Grandpa Standing Bear and Grandpa uh, White Eagle. And I come from White Eagle line. White Eagle and Standing Bear. Now they're the same first cousins or brothers or however you want to look at it. Grandpa White Eagle come from the Zeke of the Blood Clan, what they call it today. And Grandpa Standing Bear came from the Osage Clan, Wajaje. And the reason that is, is because his mother was a VC the, the blood clan, but it doesn't matter. We're patrilineal. His father, Standing Bear's father, was an Osage clan member. So that's why these two first cousins, these brothers, one's from the blood clan, one's from the Osage clan, because we're patrilineal. And then it goes down to Horse Sheep Eagle, and uh, I don't know who Grandpa Standing Bear's children's name or by name. You guys probably know, but I don't know. Do you know what his children's names were? I just know that everyone says the the Leroy's are the direct descendants. The Leroy's up here are the direct descendants of um, Chief Standing Bear, but I don't know. I don't know who his children were. I don't know that history, but I know the Leroy, the Leroy family are the ones that are associated with Standing Bear's Standing Bear's direct line up here in the north. Because you know, down here, remember I was telling Ricky. Uh, we got a great um, bear shield bear shield was one of them according to bear what i'm reading one, well bear shield was the one that got that died and got took back to his bones are supposed to get taken back okay. and then the boy, a, a girl a prairie, flower. Flower. prairie flower also died right. on the way both both his children died on died on his the way and that was, was it all of, of his first. children the prairie flower was one of the first daughters that died. 
you got that one that they got the mon the that monument or that little white buffalo girl mm -hmm. they saw it with and then yeah. prairie flower pra pra prairie prairie flower died by kansas and that's where grandpa standing bear became a christian he became a christian and he asked him if he could bury his daughter prairie flower in the christian cemetery and remember her and he got baptized there in kansas somewhere i know these guys probably know that history connie i don't know that history because it pertains to them more so they're really into what happened to standing bear yeah he stayed but up even there down, but even down there i thought that uh your guys' main chief in the wind down there was Birdhead, wasn't it? I didn't hear you. I I don't I, I honestly don't know, Eagle Rod. I honestly don't know. What was Birdhead the was one of the Birdhead Birdhead was one of the chiefs that went back up there with Standing Bear. Hmm. Remember I told you we had a whole bunch of chiefs. But yeah, both of them were, yeah. Both of them were not main chiefs. The only main chief we had was White Eagle. And okay, and listen, so the other day, I, I, I wanted to ask you something, Eagle Rod, though. So, so when Standing Bear went back, uh, uh, with his with his people up north to take his son back, was that how was that looked upon by the other Ponkas that remain? Because I've heard, I've heard Barry, I'm gonna, I've I'm heard gonna, Barry I'm gonna they, take it off. I'm gonna take it. I'm gonna. I'm gonna unrecord it. Okay, because I'd like to know because right, I've right. been hearing things. So, when Standing Bear made the decision to to go back up north, then I've heard varying things about how the remaining Ponkas that stayed in Oklahoma felt about that. What? What? Could you share with me what you know? Listen, right now, class, we're not recording. Okay. He was looked at. He was looked at as a coward. No, no Ponka down. No, no Ponka here respected him. Yeah. And his own brother, his own brother Big Snake, his little brother Big Snake was murdered down here because of him. Uh, and he never even came back to try to come to his uh, his funeral or nothing, you know, to even pay pay homage to his brother. And the Ponca people said, "What chief leads the people?" Even though he wasn't a main people, Grandpa Standing Bear was a clan chief, and the, of the he was a clan chief of the Osage clan. He wasn't even a, a powerful chief. My grandfather is the main chief. Why did he go? He is the main chief over all of them. And that's how they look at him. And Ricky brought that up to me last week. I don't know what kind of coincidence you're bringing that up. Maybe he talked to you about it. But you see, Ricky's family also come from Southern Ponca. And they told him his grandma that came from down here, that was born down here, but went back up there in the modern times. I told him how. And how, how up there they glorify him from leaving his other his clan members and his people behind. And and I, I don't know what to think about that because that was a different time. But I know the stories of him. And the stories of him, there's not even stories of him going into battle or nothing. Yeah, no, that's and, what and I that's why I heard. I, I hadn't heard it from Ricky. Actually, I I heard it so my uh my eldest son worked worked the whole summer with Dwight up here in Niobrara, and I think Dwight had uh, had told him about that how Standing Bear was looked looked on when he left as as doing something cowardly or whatever. Yeah, so I just wanted to see if that's what you had heard too. Well, we heard that our whole life down here. Yeah. No, all right. Well, thank. Yeah. No. Thanks for sharing that. I just always yeah. like to ask to see. You know, you have to yeah. find out. And then also, whenever they put that statue up down here, that's the largest statue standing there in the United States. There's like three statues of them in various places, but none of them are as big as that one. That one Which is like one? 40 foot. Which one? The one down here. The one here in Ponca. Oh, I've never been down that way, so I, I don't know. 40 feet? That's the biggest one? It's you like 40 feet. Right? Yeah, it's huge, Anna Connie. Wow. Did yeah, you, yeah. When you were up in Niobrara, did you yeah. see the one? Put up in in Niobrara of him when you were up that, there. That one, that one right there, you could fit you could fit uh six or seven of them in that one statue, stacking them on top. Wow, <laughs> wow, that is gigantic, then, man. 
And it, it might even be bigger than that. It's at least 50, 40 to 50 feet tall. And then wide, width-wise, hell, it might be about shit, easy 12, 15 feet wide. Wow. It's no, a monster. It's, it's monstrous, bro. I've never seen that, yeah. Well, when we come okay, down, so, I have to see it. Yeah. Yeah, okay, so listen. And so anyway, the one that helped put that statue up was my grandpa, Lewis Hedman. Lewis Hedman, his father, his father's father was full blooded brothers with Grandpa Standing Bear that had to stay here. Mm. Oh no, his mother, his uh, father's mother, was a full blooded sister to Standing Bear, and so that was his closest line. And even though Waddy was his close line, all the punkers were furious when they put that Standing Bear statue up here, and they said, "Why would they not put Waddy up there?" But it was a, that was a one man thing. Lewis Edmond did that shit with them white people by himself. He didn't have permission from our punk elders or or our present day chief. But the ones that should have been chief, like my grandpa Douglas Eagle, that's still alive, that has all Thomas. He did that all by himself because that was his mom's family. And so, anyway. You got to read that book about Whitey and what he done for our Ponca people and how he had to go through and suffer all the things that he went through. What you is know, the name uh, of that book? Yeah, I was going to say, Eagle, what's the name of that book? I've never read a book on I've Whitey. never seen a White Eagle book. Is there a book about him? Well, or I, 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 yeah, it's a big, thick book. I could have showed you with my son. One of my sons. Is he going in and out for you? Yeah, Eagle, you're, go you're kind of going in and out again with your voice. I'm kind of hearing you. I'm, yeah, I'm hearing yeah, like every third word. <laughs> can you hear me? I can hear you, but when you talk, it, it goes in and out and in and out, and you get really soft, like you've put something over the microphone, and then you take it away, and then you yeah, do it even, again. Yeah, even with, my mic turned off, even with my mic turned off, you're kind of... Yeah, mine's been off, too, until just now. Oh. See, I didn't even hear that. I just heard the last syllable. Hello. Can you can you hear us? I hear you clear. Like I don't. I mean, I don't know why you can't hear me. I hear you clear. Right I now, I just hear you right now. I know. <laughs> <laughs> no, whenever yeah. we address. Oh, you. No, you were saying there's a book. We were asking you about the book that you said about White Eagle, and we were asking what what's the name? Is it just called White Eagle, or because I've never yeah, seen, I've never what, seen uh, that. It's called White Eagle by Doctor Zimmer. Uh, Z-I-M-M-E-R? Yeah, Zimmerman. No, Zimmerman. Zimmerman, okay. I'm going to find that. It's like book. that, but at M-A-N. Okay. Sean, if I find a deal on it, I'll let you know. Well, look for another one, sister, because my son, I told you, he got drunk or something and lost it somewhere. Oh, 10-4, okay. I'll do it. The one I, I had was one of the, I had an original book that was old as hell. I had to tape it because it was falling apart. And now I don't got it. Dr. Zimmerman, you said? Dr. Yeah. Zimmerman? All right. I'll see if I can find it. Yeah, make there, sure you look at something. some book places too, because I found um I found a dictionary, uh one of these dictionaries at a bargain book place. It was really off off the beaten track, and I got it for like sixteen dollars or something. I was I was like, oh give me. <laughs> You're talking about a punk dictionary? Yeah, yeah, they only had one, but it was just. I can't, some... I can't. I don't see. I don't even know how to operate technology to even look for simple shit like yeah. that. For real, bro. I well, don't, I man. I don't some... even know how to do that. I'm gonna share. I get hit over the head and got to pay that crazy price. No, but anyway, back to Grandpa Sandenberg. Not trying to talk bad on him, but there's not even no account to him. There's not even no account to him in battle or nothing. I read somewhere that the Ponca were the only ones that did not go to war with the United States as far as physical. I don't know where we're I read not one that. of the only ones. We're one of the ones that didn't, not the only one. There was multiple yeah, tribes that didn't go okay. to war. Oh, okay. Okay. I read that wrong then. Yeah, we're oh, one of the ones that didn't. This is good history. No, this is good history. This is what we need to find out. So did you did you turn off off your recorder? <laughs> yeah, I did. <laughs> No, no, no. I'm just that because you know it's hard. People don't. People don't like to. People should hear 
what what the truth is, but I know it upsets people and stuff like that too. So so I understand. But no, I just asked because, like I said, my son had heard from Dwight because when they were speaking, um, you know, um, and Dwight had mentioned to him, you know, that it was not looked upon, you know, standing. His uh, I think the way Dwight put it was like running away, like he was running away. Did you guys just see that, or what happened? What's that? You cut out, Eagle. To... You you went away, and then you came right back. You guys did. both went away. You guys both went away and came back. Yeah, well, that's weird. We're having technical difficulties. I don't know. So I just want to. I just want to ask. You know, because that's what I had heard about it too. That it was that he was not looked upon yeah. very well for returning up up there. Like he was taking off from everybody because it was too hard down there. But you got to remember something. Like I was telling you, he was born in eighteen forty or eighteen forty one. There's not even no records of him going into battle, fighting other tribes, is what I'm trying to tell you. Yeah. Right, right. There's a, there's a song they, they made that says, Shade on Ojibe, Shade on Ojibe, Shade on Ojibe, Shade on Ojibe, Ojibe. Montreal Ojibe, Ojibe. And that's all it says. It says standing bears is right there. Standing bears right there. He's right there. All my grandfathers to my father have all been in battle. And the only reason I didn't get to go to the war is because in 1994, I was 16 years old. I got in trouble. And so they would not allow me from a conjoint robbery. 1994, I was 16 years old. I got a felony. I took it to trial because I've never been in trouble for him. My friend robbed a, he robbed a store with an unloaded gun in Osage County where they killed Osage Indians on a daily basis to steal their millions of dollars. They ain't got no love for them. I ain't never been in trouble in my life. I was just sitting in the car drunk. I didn't even rob the damn store. And the gunman testified against me and the car driver testified against me. I was the only one that got a felony like that 28 years ago. The only one. That sucks. Big I'm time. 44 and I was 28 years ago. And so I never got to go to battle. And I tell my sons all the time, I got a bunch of sons. I said, go to the war, go to the army. I said, redeem our name. My brothers went to war, but I didn't. I, I applied to the army and the navy and the marines and it got turned down because of my family. You're so young. Too late. The the youngest the youngest you could the oldest you could be now is thirty seven years old to enlist. I'm yeah, 44. unless it's wartime. Then they they could do that old man enlistment again like they did in <laughs> World War One. <laughs> well do that shit for me. Let me get in there. Let me go do some. Scott wants to go to Ukraine. It's like, no, you're not going over there. <laughs> Who's that? My husband. He wants he's so silly. He How wants to go to Ukraine. Husband? I want to go over there too. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that's pretty real. Well, that's good I'm history decent. that you shared. That's good yeah. history you shared. Thank you. It is. You know, that's what I'm saying. It's important to like hear what the real story is, even though if it bothers people or whatever, you know. Well, I'm sure it might get me terminated. So that's why I had to. <laughs> <I'm> not- <laughs> I'm not sharing. I'm not sharing that. I'm not sharing that. It's the truth, though. It ain't like, I, like I said, I asked about it because that's what my son came back and told me after you know speaking with with Dwight, and I said I didn't know. You know, I didn't know. So now I know. Now I know that Dwight was telling him the real deal. They have in this one book that I showed you, Sean. It has like Omaha historical text, and it has. Uh, this, uh, the first battle between the Omaha and the Ponca, and there's two versions. There's all kind of little battle stories like we were just talking about. So you do good to get this. I think you'd be interested in it, you know, and enjoy it. Was that the Ponca world or the, the other world? It's that one with the watch on it, the Degiha language. Right, right, Jim, okay. James yeah, no, I'm definitely, I'm definitely going to see if I can get my hands on, on that. Right, there's yeah, an account of the first war on. party. Like I said, it was it was copyrighted in like 1890. So, 
you know, not to say that everything then was the truth, but yeah. <laughs> that's, you know, that's closer to that era than we are. Right. It's so, much closer. It's like, yeah. And the memories much, would be better. So yeah. Firsthand accounts. Yeah. Instead yeah, of, exactly. Yeah, accounts Grandpas and, and things. Yeah. Right. So, yeah. All the grandpas. Check, check, but check this out. Um, Okay, I just lost my train of thought. What I was gonna say. Whoa. It was about that book that you're gonna get. Hold on, I gotta think about it. Damn, I forgot what the hell I was gonna say. Really quick while he's oh, thinking. Oh no, I know. What, no, it, I know what it was. It's about that Omaha fight. Okay, sis, what you just mentioned—the Omaha fight in the punker, they talk about beating us. Okay, but the punker will tell you down here that the true thing what happened about that fight with them, uh, that fight, they had smallpox. And, and the that's punker what they told ran. them. That's what I heard. That's what I heard, too. You got they damn ran. right. They, they ran because they didn't want to they catch ran it. Because yeah. we're, well, we, we, just, we were just getting cured from it, healed from it. So many punker already died from it. And now you got these punk, these Omahas that everybody knows that they had smallpox. This story that I was just reading, it's the very first thing is about smallpox on that story I was just mentioning that he's talking about now. Yeah. So there you yeah, go. No, I, had heard, I had heard that too, the smallpox. The Omaha had small uh, outbreak of smallpox when that happened, yeah. And they want to try to, they, they were, they're proud of Ponca's. It, it ain't like Ponca just feared them and the entire village took off running. The entire fucking village took off running because they didn't want to die from smallpox. And they want right. to count that as a victory against us, please. So, Eagle and uh, and 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 the and historical books that are written by by um, white people about Ponca, they always say that the Ponca were never a big tribe. But I heard you saying that the Ponca were were a big tribe. So, I mean, what do the elders say about like how big were were the Poncas, like? Tens of thousands, thousands, tens of, tens of thousands. So was it the smallpox then that decimated, and knocked our numbers down? Yeah, but still, even when they knocked our numbers down, we were never as low as what they said. You read that shit they said in some of these books. Oh, there were five hundred punkers that made it to Oklahoma. That's a goddamn lie. Yeah, yeah, no, they always talk about hundreds. They never say even a thousand. They're always like, well, when we encountered them, there was only like eight hundred or something like that. And then there's so many punkers that they can't stand that. Man, punkers down here hate Francis for Flex. For real. They don't hate Standing Bear, but they hate Francis for Flex. He gave up. He he spoke. He act like he spoke. He act like he talked to punkers when they made that. Get that. If you guys get a chance, buy that Omaha Tribe 1 and 2. Yeah, I actually, I actually have that. I don't think I've ever read it. I have it though, but I've never read it. I've never read oh, it. Oh, hang on, like Jerry Thompson. Hang on, hang on, real quick. Okay. How you doing, brother? I was just in there talking to some of our Ponca people about that movie, and I didn't know how it was going. And I told them, but we were talking about at the documents and stuff about Broad Eyes and how they're kind of because of Omaha. Broad Eyes didn't have no Omaha blood in her. Her dad was Joseph LaFlesh. His father was a French Canadian trapper that was uh, that married a full blooded Ponca that that Joseph and his brother Frank came from. Um, yes, that's right. That's right. And see, see Frank, uh, see Jerry knows what he's talking about. And so, anyway, and then he married Ma Mrs. Mary Laflesh. I don't know her maiden name, but her dad was a. No, no, not that one. You're talking about his daughter. I'm talking about her mother. Yeah, but listen, but Mary, but Mary Garrow, but she was an Oto and wife. Okay, but you see, the, no. Yes. But the point was, no, I don't. That's what we're talking about. There's Northern and Ponca, Southern Ponca is talking about this. It's like they're trying to, 
take away from the Ponca by doing it. And then remember I told you about how they felt, but now I got, I got, I got to talk to their council members in the culture and their uh, language committee up there and how we talked about how are they going to call her Omaha when she didn't even have Omaha blood in her. And then, no, the Ponca council up that way. Some of them in the, also the culture and language committee. He got adopted by a man that didn't have no son. His son died. Big Al's son died or something. He didn't have no one to leave his seat to. I know. I don't know. I never read that in any book. My point is, but the modern day Omaha now are trying to really get fame off of her and Standing Bear. And to me, and by having that movie, even if you did make a movie called Standing, uh, Bright Eyes, it's like you're it's like you're taking away from what he had done, you know, by being by his six by his situation. And that's what we we're talking about. And I said, I don't know. I said, uh other than what I've been told by Ponkas that are long gone, Ponkas that are still alive, and then what I've read in uh, multiple books, and I don't believe everything I read in a book because a lot of times it's his story, you know, that, that they just get from somebody or, or I don't know where they might have got it from, but sometimes their accounts ain't accurate. Who? Well, I don't know who you're talking about, bro. You're talking about White Swan. Oh, he lived with the Ponca. He's got, he got You know, there's some people who, I don't know, first person asked me 20 years ago, I wouldn't know if I was French, German, Italian, what, you know, I wouldn't know. So sometimes these people don't know what they are, you know. Yeah, but no, but Ponca, Native Americans, we know what we are to the T, though. That's just inbred in us, put in us, ingrained in us. I've never seen nothing about her saying that she was Omaha or saying that she wasn't Ponca. But what I'm saying is modern day Omaha say that she is Omaha. And that's, you're talking about Bright Eyes, right? I don't know who that is. Indian doctor in the United States, like a woman doctor. You see, she, 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 no, but they come from the same mom and dad's what I'm saying. You know, uh, we know she wasn't there because she testified uh, before the Senate about or this some different things that they're asking her. She said, no, we heard about the newspapers. So, so I'm, with, I'm, I'm not disputing anything you're saying. I want to know. Uh, my question is whether they consider themselves Omaha, even though they were Ponca. Yeah, I don't know, but, but my point is, is you never see no, no clipping or you never see no article or even a book said that they were Omaha other than that 
that and it didn't even say, all the things I read about Francis. I mean, uh, Joseph Lafleche Lefre- and all these things. It said that Umpa Umpa Thonga Big Out gave his seat to him because of his son. Okay, oh, and, and that wasn't him talking about himself. That was someone talking about him. Now whether now he was really the chief. He took that seat as a. Uh, Half breed punk that took that seat as a as an Omaha. Yeah, and I, I ain't disputing that either. But my point is, is this seems like from what I heard from all my relatives up that way, and then also I asked them how about why are we getting the Northern Punkers involved? And they said we're just asking you guys because you guys are punker, and that's how they said it. Escapes me, the Northern Ponca chairman. It's two years ago or three, I met him and he said they would help and support him. Not, not necessarily have lots of money or anything, but um, right, his name's right. Larry, Larry. is Larry, Larry Jr. Now, do you consider him Northern Ponca? He's Ponca. I know. He's, he's Ponca of Nebraska. No, I said my Omaha uncles, they told me I asked them about it, and they said, no, we came down here. And I did talk to them, and, and you know, and, and my, because I asked them, I said, why aren't you getting them? And they never, yeah, but, yeah, but they never, but they never told me you did. They're talking about, because I asked them when we we're at my mom's place, sweating, because my uncle Dwight was there, and my uncle uh, Calvin was there, and my uncle uh, Pierre Merrick was there. And, you know, so I was just asking them, and uh, they told me they came to us. You know, they never did say, well, we went to them or like they even wanted to go. No, they didn't say that. I asked them as men. Why didn't they, why didn't they go? No, they didn't. I said, why did you not listen? I said, why didn't you go to them? No, I'm talking about why didn't them, because they said they're representatives of that movie. They never mentioned you saying you did or didn't go, and I didn't ask. But my point is, is all that happened with them that were still up there while we were already in Oklahoma. And so I think that, and I told them, I think they should be included in that. And then this is the first account that I heard about Larry. He's their former uh, chairman up there. Right now, they don't have a chairman, but but he's a, he was a good dude. I liked him. Senior. That's his daddy. Senior. Yeah. That's your. They did a movie, and you know, and then we talk. And then I talk. Eating and pictures, and he he had me speak to his group there for a little while, and then when I tried to get back with him again, he really didn't. Uh, Communicating, I tried, I, and then I saw him in person at uh, dedication of Suzanne, Suzanne Lafleche's statue as a Native American first woman doctor. And that was a big ceremony and statue down in Lincoln. So, what I'm the basic thing I'm trying. You got somebody there with you listening to, right? Yeah. I am not. I'm not against what you're saying at all. I if. I mean, I want peace among you. I don't want to cause a problem here, but I, um, nothing in the title says that it's Bright Eyes Omaha. Um, so we would call her life, but she lived on the Omaha reservation. And she considered, they considered as far as everything I see that, that Paula was their cousins. But you're saying they're, they're really not just their cousins, they're their direct descendants, or I mean, even more direct. Right. Yeah, they are direct descendants. That's, that's all I'm saying. Yeah. Yes. And 
and all that. Mm-hmm. That's what I just told these guys. I said she was half French, but I couldn't remember her last name. I mean, I it's true is what I hear it, okay? Like I said, I'm not putting mm-hmm. my eyes at a courtroom when she wasn't there. I'm not going to put uh, or have... If I hear, that's why I went and got the blessing in the first place. I said, from the Omaha, not knowing, you know, then I found out about the because of state. And then I went to them twice, you know, two or three times actually. Yeah, three times I've been to the, I've been to the Northern Ponca and to you guys too. When you gave me the blanket, I'm very thankful for that. So we're trying to get the funding. Um, I ran into a guy here in Eugene, of all places, that has a um, connection with the Shock Top Indian Casino. The casino, and he said it's not a matter of the money; it's just whether they want to do it. Yeah. But but I don't know your casino there. Uh, is rich enough to help fund something well, like this. We got multiple, but you know, when you talk to me, and then I talk to my. Uh... My cousin, but it was too obscure. I mean, we don't even really know what to say. I mean, we don't got no script. You said, what did you tell them that I was in there? Uh, a producer? Or what, they're not, what, did, what did you call my title? Your title? Yeah. I said it would be assistant producer, yeah. Yeah, assistant producer. But at the same time, you know, we, we really couldn't even talk to these guys without the appropriate uh, uh, knowledge about the movie and the script. We didn't have enough information to talk to them about. So who the hell wants to listen Yeah, because you know, because one thing you got, one thing about us in Oklahoma, and even the the Ponca of Nebraska, and the tribes in Oklahoma, and the Ponca of Nebraska, they got money. You know what I mean? But you got to know what the, what I got. One thing about me, I'm good at talking. Everybody knows I'm good speaking publicly or even one on one. But the thing is, is I don't fully know what this movie's about. If it's just about standing bears, is it mainly about bright eyes, or I mean, yeah. Thirty minutes in the movie, almost half, because she helped bring about that court trial, along with Thomas Tibbles, the newspaper man, and and Brooke, and you know, and the judge and the lawyers. But we also, of course, Standing Bear went on the uh, tour with her and Tibbles after the court case, and so that's in the movie too. I'll say, I mean, I can send you right. Today, a synopsis, a 10-page synopsis that'll tell you most everything the movie's about, if you'd like me to do that. Just, just email it to me. And right yeah. here, and the person I got when we, that is listening, it's just uh, uh, one of my students, Connie, and one of my students, Sean, and then uh, Emily. And I remember, you remember yeah. Emily down there when you met her? I saw Wait, what I said. I want to stop. Yeah. Your eighty cents is gonna come to you no matter what. It's a really good it's the best incentives in the country. Yeah. yeah. But that's what I'm saying, though, Jerry, if you could uh, send me that 10-page deal and give me more information to be able to talk about the stuff, because I didn't know what to say, you know what I mean? I talked to some of these people, and some of them, I didn't even want to go to the Chickasaw. Chickasaw is one of the richest tribes in the, in the Oklahoma and in the United States. They're, they're billionaires, you know, and and uh, without coming with the right proposal or even knowing what, exactly what I'm talking about, other than, you know, I, I mean, why even try to go there?
Well, well, we did talk about it, and we felt like that we didn't have enough information to talk about. You said you were going to send me something, and you never did. Yeah. Mm -mm. Okay, whenever you send that, Jerry, I'll print it out, and I'll talk. Yeah, Delta. Mm -hmm. No, I don't know that movie. So, and there's a lot of people that are, they're getting slack off of that movie, not just that movie, and off with the car because they didn't even use a Native American actress in there. They use the, the main girl, though, they had her. She's a Hawaiian. Yeah, she's a Hawaiian. I know. Yeah. And so in that same girl that they used in there, what have they got her in Emily? And uh Yellowstone? Oh no. Oh they they got a, they got another one in there. They're playing all these Indian parts. They're picking Polynesian and Chinese to play our part. Uh, the actress we got is Cheyenne Arapaho, and we know that for sure. But it's not over until it's over, you know, until I'll things are okay. But the chick, here, let me point this the thing about the Chickasaw, according to the I'll producer be. who made Tata, however, um, they just fund Chickasaw projects about them. Now, maybe they can do convinced otherwise. Well, according to him, they they aren't interested in anything but about the Chickasaw tribe. Funding. Okay, but when they did that Choctaw movie, you got to remember Choctaw and Chickasaw ain't the same either, though. No. Video where you talk. Yeah. Can send that video to you again if you haven't seen it. I thought you'd seen it. Can you send it all back to me? And I apologize. Okay. But listen, let's get this thing growing. I want to. I want to get on this now. Like I said, I got a lot more things going. On. Well, what it was too, Jerry. I almost died. You know, since the last time I talked to you, and I just really see things in a different way. And you know, I, I got a lot of things going for me, uh, uh, positively, and then also spiritually and all that, financially. You know, I'm doing a lot of work. I'm like crazy busy with the uh, work and then also uh, teaching. Yeah, and you're teaching the language? Teaching, teaching the language. I'm also going to college full time. Yeah. You know what? what? In there, you had that. No. Yeah, when you. Yeah. yeah. But Jerry. Oh, she just went outside. This is but, uh, brother, I just want you to know we love you. We're praying for you, and we're hoping this project gets solved. But send me all the stuff we can do, and we got to meet up and get this going. And I'm going to jump on. Thanks for calling. I'll send this in a little bit. I'll be waiting. All right, thank you. Bye. Right. Oh, that's 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 that sounds you know, crazy, he, man. That sounds crazy. Like you got a stuff going on, man. Trying to find money and trying to get get what he's doing. Yeah. But, but he didn't give me enough information. Let me tell you yeah, something, brother. I, I can speak. <laughs> I can speak. I ain't got no problem talking to people I ain't never met in my life. <laughs> and trying to convince them. So this is a and, movie. This is a movie that um they're trying to get made. And they uh they're looking for funding, and they're help. They want you to make some pitches for them to get money. Yeah, I'm telling. I can do it, bro. But like I said, the information he gave me wasn't shit. I couldn't even fucking. I mean, it's like, 
I talked to a few people, you know, and I'm thinking, I wouldn't even fucking give me no goddamn money. I got to know what the hell's going on and what I'm getting back up. What's my get out of it? Yeah, yeah. But any, but anyway, it's two o'clock, and I love you yeah. guys. And listen, listen, I'll see you guys I want Monday. you listen. I want you guys to be a part of this thing too, this movie thing going on. Because, like I said, you see, you see, I'm gonna be a producer on it if it goes through. And you know, uh, you just hang in there. You should talk to Ricky about Ricky about that. You know, I, I'm gonna talk I, to him. I haven't, I haven't heard of any of this. This is like the first time I've heard that there was even a movie being. Kind of Eagle. Nice are you able to send over what he what he sends you? Out of I'm curiosity. Send it to both of you. Yeah, You're I can. You the bomb, man. I'm gonna work on getting that book, Connie. I'm gonna work on getting that book, and then if you see anything uh, about a book about White Eagle that Eagle Rod mentioned, yeah. just let me know. But you I'm gonna try to get a bead on both those books. Can I so write I down can... your email address just to make sure I got it, Sean? Oh yeah, yeah, sure. I'll I'll speak it real slow. So it's just um. This is all lowercase. It's just S A S A I Z at UW alumni. That's all together. UW alumni dot com. Okay. That's it. Got it. So if you see something, yes. but I'm gonna I'm gonna see if I get a hold my hands on those two books. I know I know we don't have them. That that wasn't one of the books that uh, we got yeah. we got given. So I want to try and get a hold of both of those. I've never. Yeah, like I said, if I see them at any any type of discount, I don't know what they normally cost, but I'll, yeah, I'll send it to you guys. Right. Just uh, if I find some, I'll let you know. That book Wadigo, yeah. that book Wadigo could cost up to six hundred dollars. Ah, jeez, yeah. That's Holy moly! <laughs> I see it on a Kindle app now. It's gonna uh, go. Oh, That's listen. why I have walks on the ground. Yeah. Well, like I said, fi- try to find try to find me one too, because I ain't, I no longer have that book anymore. Sis. Thanks, my God. boy. Lost you know it. I will, sweetie. I'll see you, you all Monday. Okay. See you Monday. Uh, God right. bless y'all. Love y'all. Love you.